G'day there guys, insert funny hilarious introduction here that people respond to down in the comments. It's Marky, back at it again with another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Now if you love today's content, be sure to chuck a like and do tell me what you think in the comments. Posted by user, throw away lots of numbers. Titled, am I the a-hole for mocking my brother for getting rejected by his dream college that I got into because he keeps tormenting me over it. My brother Jake, 18 male, and I, 17 female, had the same dream college, H University. Also, in case you're confused by the ages, we are one and a half years apart, but I skipped a grade so we were in the same grade for nearly our entire life. Jake was way more passionate about H Uni than I was. He had several H merch clothing, and kinda just assumed he was going there. For example, in conversations he would say things like, once I'm at H, or, after I go to H, my plan is... Basically, his life plan rested on him going to H. Jake and I got along pretty well, and we'd sometimes give each other advice or study together. However, during college app season, he got super competitive once he realised I was also applying to H. He had refused to study together, look over each other's essays, and he had constantly tell me not to even bother applying. Then... Decisions came out, and we opened them at the same time. I was accepted, and he was rejected. Jake had a massive panic attack, and instead of celebrating my acceptance with my family, I sat in my room all day because Jake would get furious when he saw me. I once even caught him trying to unlock my laptop to decline my offer, since his friend DM'd me to warn me that he had been talking about doing that. My parents obviously punished him for that, which made it so much worse. When my H sweatshirt came in, he screamed at me for showing off when I put it in my closet. He told so many people I only got in because I was a girl, and that H mixed the siblings up. Honestly, I felt bad for him because I would be crushed too if I were him. Every time I tried to get him to stop, it got worse, so I just kept tolerating it. I thought it'd get better after the summer once college actually started. It has not. Now it's really set in that he's going to a good, in my opinion, state school, and not H. His anger is largely compounded by the fact that he's going to the same college that he used to condescend other students about aiming for. My classes start soon, so I've been setting up in our study, which I share with Jake. Both of our rooms are tiny, with no room to study in, so we share a study with two desks that face away from each other. Jake cleared out my whole desk and broke my lamp in the process. He says that I need to study in my room so he can use the study without distractions for his classes. We've always both worn headphones. There is literally no distraction. He just doesn't want to see me taking classes at H. I am so fudging done. I just want to be proud that I got into this college and actually learn crap without my brother screaming at me about it. Where I might be the a-hole... We got into an argument, and I told him that of course he got rejected since H didn't take toddlers. I've also been wearing my H sweatshirt around the house constantly, which he gets angry about. He kept bothering me, so I superglued H rejection letters in the drawers of his desk, so he has to see them when he opens them. Why did you do that? I was on your side this whole time. Why did you have to superglue the rejection letters? The other things I could forgive, but super gluing the rejection letters. That's evil. You're so evil. I can understand the man was being a nuisance to you, and I know he's being such a baby, but you just stepped up so hard there. That was so unnecessary, OP. I don't even need to explain the answer. It's very obvious that everyone sucks here. After reading what you did, everyone sucks here. This is escalating. Where are your parents in all this? For college-bound kids, you both need to grow up. Yeah, valid. I was being a dick. My parents don't want to get involved and think that we need to settle it between ourselves. If need be, they'll separate us to our rooms and talk to us. Mum to Jake, Dad to me. Staying away from each other isn't really possible when you live in the same house, though. Dad usually says things like, Just tolerate it. Your brother is hurting right now but it'll get better once milestone in a few months from the talk. Yikes, that's some bad parenting. 
they aren't doing your brother any favours by letting him act out like this. They cannot let he's hurting be an excuse to bully, torment, and destroy property. This thing has escalated long past settle it yourselves. Time for them to step up and provide guidance and enforce some actual household rules. Yeah, if the sequence of events is accurate, then the parents had months to de-escalate and help correct the issue. And then OP didn't need to retaliate after months of torment. I know I wouldn't have been able to deal with months of this. I thought this was like, maybe a week. But yeah, nah. If someone was a fudging a-hole to me for a few months, I'd probably snap and start being one right back. Not the a-hole. Your brother is hitting obsessive levels of jealousy. Trying to decline your offer letter? What a horrible thing to even think of. He deserves the rejection letters in the drawers. Lol, that's hilarious. Even though it was a little mean, he did ask for it. At this point, your parents really need to step in and tell him to calm the F down already. You didn't do anything to affect his college acceptance. You don't deserve any jealousy, it's 100% not your fault, and he is having an unhinged level of aggression towards you over it. It's not okay. Posted by user, puzzle-headed ad 1608, titled, Am I the a-hole for comparing drugs to my girlfriend's hobby? My girlfriend and I have been together for 10 years. We were both pretty straight edge, but over the years, I've began experimenting more with drugs. She hasn't. I don't do anything crazy, just weed, shrooms, coke, and MDMA. <laughs> she hates that I do it, and was complaining about it today. She thinks it's far too dangerous, and I'm likely to overdose and die. I said it's about as dangerous as her hobby, which is cave diving. She's been doing it for a few years. It's that scary BS where people swim in underwater caves. She's spent a lot of money on the gear. I hate it. I think it's too risky, and I get anxious every time she goes. I think she's more likely to die than I am. She keeps bugging me to dive with her, and I said fine, if you do MDMA with me. She got mad and said that it's different. Am I the a-hole? Legalities aside, I don't see a difference in risk or likelihood of death. You know what, OP, let's just do them together. Let's see how great and fun that sounds. Tripping off the MDMA, deep diving into some caves. I'm gonna go searching for some dragons. But for real, I do think the MDMA is a step up from cave diving, and it's not something that everyone does, either hobby. But obviously there's a huge societal stigma against the drugs, it's understandable why she feels that way, and I don't think it's acceptable for you to put that on her. This just doesn't seem like something that's compatible between you guys in the relationship, and more communication is needed between you two, I think. And I think it makes you the a-hole for you suggesting that. You're the a-hole. They are completely different. Cave diving has safety equipment, and the main danger is people's inexperience and naivety. Drugs can be seriously dangerous, and are also illegal. The danger of drugs is not reduced with experience and safety equipment, it completely depends on what's in the substance you've been sold. Drugs can also turn from a fun weekend hobby to ruining your life. Coke isn't cheap and is highly addictive. Far too many people think they can stop when they want, and then when they try, it's just not that easy. Enjoy your weed and shrooms, but until you cut out the hard stuff, you're the a-hole. He sent dick videos to people while high. He's already starting to do dumb crap with his life, Lamau. You're the a-hole. Weed and shrooms are pretty tame, yes, but MDMA can be a dangerous in certain situations, like at a rave, dehydrating, etc. And coke? Sorry dude, but you're the a-hole here. You're the a-hole. Stop justifying your dangerous behaviour, period. It's making you do ridiculous stuff, which I referred to before sending the videos of his dick, for one thing. But the idea that regularly doing coke and E isn't doing anything crazy is completely ludicrous and demonstrates that you are way in over your head and need help. Cave diving might be risky, but it's on an entirely different level than being an addict. Posted by user, Confused Bridezilla. Titled, Would I be the a-hole if I told one of my bridesmaids to cover up her scars for my wedding? 
So I have this bridesmaid Anne, who got into an accident back in 2014 that left her with multiple scars. One large scar on her back, two smaller but very noticeable ones on her right arm, and smaller, less visible ones on her right leg. Now I have a niece, Jane, who went through a traumatic period in her life. Not recently, but is still recovering and cannot see scars or anything that looks like a scar without having an anxiety attack. Jane is 17, and I've seen her have an anxiety attack over a scratch on the wall that was shaped similarly to a scar. After an incident initially occurs, she can have up to three panic attacks within the next month. To elaborate, she has panic disorder. Jane barely leaves the house, unless it's to see her therapist, which she now has sessions with over Zoom. So coming to my wedding and being a bridesmaid is a really important event to her. She has also been working on a special dance that she's going to do with my nephew at the reception, and she has been practicing really hard. Even if Jane wasn't a bridesmaid, there is a very likely chance she'd come into contact with Anne at some point in the wedding. My bridesmaid's dresses don't have long sleeves, or any sleeves for that matter, and I'm willing to pay alterations for the dress. The dresses are ankle length, except for Jane's, but there will be a dance the bridesmaids are doing, except for Jane, and there's a chance that the skirt of her dress will flit up enough that her scars on her leg will be visible. Though, from where Jane is sitting, she probably won't see, but I don't want to take any chances, so I would want Anne to wear dark tights or skin tone tights that would cover up her scars. I talked to my maid of honour about it, and she says that I should just uninvite Jane from the wedding so Anne wouldn't have to cover up and Jane won't be at risk. I've talked to my fiancé about it, and he said that I'm in the right to accommodate Jane, but I can't expect Anne to show up. I haven't really talked about Anne in this post, but she's one of my best friends, and she deserves to be at my wedding. She's helped me get through so much, and I would feel like I'm backstabbing her if I ask her to cover up her own traumatic life experiences to make someone else more comfortable. At the same time, I don't think that Jane's efforts should all go down the drain because of something she can't control either. But, would I be the a-hole? OP, everyone's already told you that you would be the a-hole, and to me, it's quite obvious that you would be the a-hole too if you ask her to cover all that up. These are all very traumatic incidents for either party to have gone through, and to ask Anne to cover it up is quite disrespectful if I'm going to be honest. If she wants to show them at your wedding, she should be more than welcome to show them. You know, I don't think you should ask someone that doesn't want to cover up to cover up. You don't have that power, and you shouldn't think that you have the power to do it, because you would definitely be the a-hole if you were to do so. So, you would be the a-hole. Jane is unquestionably suffering from debilitating anxiety, and it's going to be impossible to accommodate that degree of mental health impairment in a public venue. She is having a hard time leaving the house for therapy. What's your plan when Jane sees a scratch in the bathroom wall? Or another guest cuts themselves shaving in the morning and she goes catatonic? Ultimately, this is not your problem. I really do not understand why brides insist on injecting themselves into every possible conflict. You cannot control this. Tell Jane that you would love to include her, and that may mean playing a recorded video statement, but you can't guarantee that she won't see anyone with scars, stretch marks, etc. You can also tell her that one of your friends does have scars that may be visible. Odds are, Anne isn't even going to be the only guest with visible scars. She's just the only obvious one OP can think of. I can almost guarantee another guest will have a scar or scratch or scab, or even just a birthmark that suspiciously looks like a scar. It's not possible, fair, or kind to ask everyone to cover up. You're the a-hole. Sorry, but Jane can't expect the whole world to adapt to her panic disorder. Those scars are part of Anne's body, and it's unacceptable to have her dress in a special way because of them. What if all your guests don't get the no scar memo, and Jane has a panic attack anyway? This level of event for someone who never leaves the house is just not really feasible anyway. Jane can either adapt or don't attend. I would like to add that Jane most likely wouldn't want a whole wedding party and all the guests to make such a change just for her. She never leaves her house, which tells me she wouldn't expect people to adapt to her. 
Opie, you should talk to Jane and tell her there's no way for you to make the wedding work with her panic disorder and you'd love for her to attend, but it's just not possible to have everyone cover up their scars or injuries. And what would you know, there's an update in the post. Update. Hello, hello. So I think I've read all or most of your responses and they are all very appreciated. As weird as it sounds, I'm actually a bit happy I came out as the a-hole. Covering somebody else's trauma to accommodate another, like all of you said, is a terrible thing to do. And I felt like I knew that, but was still justifying my behavior to protect my niece. I think I went a lot over protective art, and I thank you all for giving me the reality of the situation. Also, to some who thought I was using Jane as an excuse to have Anne covered up in wedding pictures, I think you guys have been reading a bit too many posts about Bridezilla's. Thank you for the concern about Anne being mistreated anyways though. And I'll definitely be talking to Anne and Jane sometime in the future. For those wondering about my niece, and to clarify some points people have brought up, Jane does not react to all scars. Acne scars are fine. If they are small and not very noticeable, they're fine. The shape and quantity are also key points. Jane has her own scars, which are kind of noticeable, depending on the situation, unless covered up. My niece is improving. It's been a year since she started therapy, and she has been showing improvement. Thank you for those who wished my niece's improvement. My wedding was originally planned for next year anyways, and if it gets delayed by another year, there's a chance that Jane will be able to improve enough to handle the situation. I will also be asking my sister, Jane, and Anne to spend some time together, like some of you suggested. I think the last thing I need to clear up is that Jane can leave the house. Like I said, not all scars are triggers. My sister is a helicopter mum and does not want to take any chances. I think I'll be suggesting Jane make a grocery trip with me and or her mum and dad sometime soon. Thank you all so much. However, to the person who called my niece self-centered and manipulative and suggested that she has narcissistic personality disorder, your response was not appreciated. Posted by user no throwaways 2386 titled, Am I the a-hole for facetiming my wife in the store? I, 42 male, got a call from my wife, 40 female, when I was getting off work and she asked me to pick up some pads from the store. I asked her to send me a text with a picture of the ones she uses to make sure that I got the right kinds. I get to Walgreens and I cannot find the kind she texted me, so I FaceTimed her in the pad aisle and was showing her the section where the brand is to see if I could find another kind. About 30 seconds in, a woman comes up and tells me that I'm being inappropriate and she was going to report me. Mind you, my wife is on video with me this entire time. I tell my wife to text me a backup pad that I could get for her and end the call. Right as my wife is texting me, a man, the store manager, and a female clerk come up to me with the woman behind them and he asks me what I'm doing and that he got a complaint that I was behaving inappropriately. I explained that I was there to buy pads for my wife and I couldn't find her brand. I told him that since I didn't see it, I called her on FaceTime. The woman then starts shouting that I was taking pictures of her and I was lying. I showed the manager the texts from my wife and I told him I just wanted to get my wife her pads and leave. The manager and the woman went up to the front of the store and the whole time she's screeching to him that he needs to call the police and have me arrested for being a pervert. The clerk stayed behind and asked if she could help me find what I needed and I agreed. I showed her the box my wife texted me and they were out. She then said that this other pad in the same brand would work just as well. I texted my wife a picture of the pads that the clerk picked out and she said they were fine. I paid for the pads and left. And when I got to the car, I cried. A grown ass man crying in his car. I've never felt more embarrassed and humiliated in my life. When I told my wife what happened, she went pale and hasn't stopped apologizing to me. Was I the a-hole for FaceTiming? I don't think I was doing anything wrong. But is there some unspoken rule about the pad aisle that I don't know about? OP, it's all good. 
This is just what we call mental illness and the Karen disease that some women unfortunately are inflicted by, and they feel the undying need to go and raise hell left, right, and center. Especially when they see a man on FaceTime with his wife in the, the pad aisle, who does he think he is? Oh, you bet your ass that's a paddle in OP. But for real, it's obvious you did nothing wrong here. You were trying to do something for your wife and you got verbally assaulted by someone and put in a stupid position. It's okay to cry. We all cry, I hope. Crying makes you feel better. And you told your wife that and you guys sorted it out. That's a real manly thing to do, OP, and I can't fault you for that. You took it on the chin, and you are more manly than a lot of men out there. A lot of men refuse to even go buying feminine products for their women, as we see in relationship posts and Am I the A-hole post. So, chin up, king. Your crown's slipping, OP. Not the A-hole. In fact, you are the opposite of an A-hole, because you shop for your woman's needs, and wanted to make sure that you got her the right product. You did nothing wrong. That lady sounds cracked. The care that went into making sure you got the right pads was great. I've had exes that either flat out refused to get me any, and some that just grabbed the first pack they saw. You went above and beyond. That lady was nuts, and just wanted to start a fight, and the manager should have shut her down. Not the a-hole, and you're a great hubby. Not the a-hole. That woman was out to start a fight, and just for the record, it's totally okay for a grown-ass man to cry, let alone after some messed up situation like this. I wish I could upvote this more. Men crying is a human reaction, and I wish more people realized it. Okay, and I think that's where we're going to end today's episode, guys. As always, I do hope you enjoyed it, and maybe even learned something from these stories. Just want to say a quick shout out to my Patreon subscribers and my channel members. You guys should be on the screen right now. If you do see yourself, I want you to give yourself a little pat on the back for being amazing, and supporting me on this channel, this uh, little journey we're going on on the YouTubes. I really appreciate it, and you guys enabled me to do all this amazing work. So if uh, you do see yourself, I love your face, and I'm happy to see you. Also, guys, if you want to pitch in your own support, you don't have to, but channel links are down in the description below to support the Patreon, the channel membership, whatever you want to do. It's kind of like tipping me if you feel like I'm doing a good job on this channel. I will be opening up avenues for content on those in the future. Just right now, I'm kind of bogged down and stuck in Ireland, but, you know... It is what it is. Anyway, guys, with that said, I do hope you have a wonderful day today. Whatever you're up to, I'd love to know down in the comments below. I do hope you have a good day, night, sleep. Whatever you're up to today, tell me, and I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Bye.